All right, this is going to be a review of the best of CM Punk, Better Than You. This is the first ever compilation that Ring of Honor ever released of CM Punk. And, uh, you know, I just kind of got into the mood to go back in time and watch some uh, older CM Punk stuff. You know, there's been a lot of debates and just a lot of, uh, you know, crowd fickling over CM Punk. You know, a lot of there's been a lot of CM Punk chants. At, you know, uh, Ring of Honor shows, WWE shows, and a lot of fighting throughout the crowd about the chance being disrespectful to certain wrestlers. But um, it kind of got me thinking. You, we've never seen a thirst this long to see somebody come back. I think a lot of people want Punk to come back and kind of, uh, you know, finish his career the right way. It's just a lot of people are very uh, confused about how it ended. And... Um, you know, eventually I think it needs to happen if Punk wants to solidify himself as the absolute greatest that's ever done it. I think he has the potential and the uh, skills to do that, but I don't think Punk will ever be in the conversation unless he does come back and, you know, finish his unfinished business. But, um, but yeah, man, Punk is, um, you know, watching watching some of this footage back, he, he definitely was one of a kind. I'm a huge fan of his work. I was a huge supporter of CM Punk back in the ROH heyday. Uh, I think you can make a, a legit argument that Punk uh, was the most important thing to ever happen to Ring of Honor. Uh, and um, if it wasn't for him, you know, this company would have never, um, you know, been successful for as long as they were if it wasn't for his efforts. I definitely do believe that. But, uh, you know, uh, a lot of you, if you have followed my videos over the last couple of years, you know that I've been kind of down on Punk. I was very disappointed in his uh, uh, interview with Cole Cabana. Um, you know, at the time, everyone was like, oh, man, Punk made a lot of great points. A lot of people took Punk's side. But then I think as time went on, especially after WrestleMania, I think a lot of people kind of realized, you know, you can't you really came off like an asshole and uh, very hypocritical, uh, a lot of bitterness over money. Um, you know, he, he stated at the beginning of the podcast that, you know, money isn't everything. Then by the time you get to the end of the video, you just felt a lot of bitterness and bitching over money. You know, Brock got this. I was promised this. Um, you know, and the, the biggest part of it was, you know, a, lo a lot of bitterness over The Rock taking his spot, which I think is justified. I, 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 I do. I, I could do. I definitely do see the frustrations about The Rock coming in. And, you know, uh, you know, it's a shame because punk punk really got hot at the time when a lot of the part timers were were coming back in and kind of hanging on to those last couple years of their careers. So punk was the one that ended up taking the, um, you know, taking the hit more than anyone because of that but like i said the my biggest problem with that interview was about the merchandise when he when he when he talked when he talked about how he was angry that they asked him to turn heel and uh, he didn't want to you know was hesitant about doing it because his merchandise sales were going to suffer that really put a bad taste in my mouth and it kind of got me thinking as to why you know, there just there just isn't a lot of great heels anymore. You know, there there isn't that one heel that goes out of his way and is trying to be hated by everybody. You know, you just don't get those type of heels anymore. And just think a lot of it has to do with uh, the merchandise revenue. You know, you, I mean, and you've seen it with John Cena. You know, re refusing to turn Cena heel because of merchandise or this situation or that situation. And uh, I think it's a huge problem. And I think the W. I don't think wrestling is ever going to be quite as engaging as it used to be unless that problem is solved and uh you know maybe the answer is you just pay heels more money you know maybe they're not going to get the you know those those extra bonuses from the merchandise but uh maybe there there could be a solution where you just pay these heels uh more money because i just think a good heel is going to drive the show you know you look back to you know when the wwe was at its best 1997 you had three just amazing amazing heels uh in their prime right there so um so that, that that's just something to think about but um i definitely do want to touch on cm punk's future uh and the possibilities the possibilities are huge and just endless of what could happen if uh, punk ever did come back but um you know if punk doesn't come back it's not the end of the world you know life does go on the wwe has more than enough talent to make up for uh the loss of cm punk but uh but let's touch on this compilation right here this is uh this is a must have for any CM Punk fan. Uh, if you want to see Punk at his best in his prime when he was hungry, when he was trying to make a name for himself, then check out his work from uh, 2003. This is a 3-hour compilation and uh they did a good job with it. It definitely chronicles um 
you know, Punk's best matches and promos. The promos are the key here. The, the, there's just some amazing promos here. Not everything made it onto the compilation, though. So if you want to, you know, get the full um, experience of Punk and Ring of Honor in 2003, definitely go back and, uh, you know, check out the, the, the original shows. Um, but uh, let's start off with Raven. You know, the ECW in 2003 was a lot, I mean, Ring of Honor in 2003 was a lot like uh, ECW because of uh, Punk versus Raven. You know, the, if ECW had still been in business, this would have taken place in ECW. And uh, it, so th this feud, it, it, it definitely felt like ECW. It just really did. Uh, so Punk comes out there, cuts an anti-Raven promo. Uh, the issue with Raven uh, has to do with uh, drugs and um, alcohol. You know, it just made total sense because Punk is straight edge and Raven's one of those guys. I remember Chris Benoit did an interview with Michael Landsberg and he, he was touching on how, you know, Raven um, was doing 400, 500 pills a day. There's just been a lot of, I think even in the RF video, Ring of Honor shoot, Raven uh, talked about several, you know, drug experiences that he had with drug dealers. And, uh, you know, th he just went through a lot of stuff. Uh, with the painkillers and with, uh, you know, prescription drugs. So that's why this whole thing with uh, Punk and Raven made for such a compelling uh, uh, feud. And, and you could really feel the hatred from Punk in, in the uh, in the promos because Raven to him represented all the frustrations of Punk's uh, childhood growing up about all the, uh, you know, I, I think he, he even touched on how Raven reminded him of his father. So, yeah, th this feud just definitely got really personal. But ex expect the unexpected. Raven kind of pops out of nowhere. Punk doesn't expect it. And we got an absolute, you know, drag out uh, brawl between Punk and Raven. You know, usually with the first match of a feud, they kind of hold back, you know, and expect them to, you know, go uh, go all out. But this was balls to the wall. Uh, Raven actually had his uh, either girlfriend or sidekick uh, Trinity out there. So, uh, you know, Punk actually took out Trinity with a leg drop through a table on the outside. Uh, this got very bloody. This very personal, just uh, j just a lot of good action for a first match of a of a feud. Uh, Punk actually makes Raven submit with some sort of uh, varied. Uh, you know, um, you know, some sort of version of the uh, Indian Deathlock. You know, I, I believe Punk might have learned that from a wrestler from Japan. But uh, you know, Raven taps out, and uh, Punk goes over. I think I believe Raven put Punk over each and every time in this feud. So, uh, so give Raven credit there. But that was the uh, you know that kind of set the tone for the whole Punk and Raven feud. They feuded throughout 2003. and uh, it, it definitely ended up being one of the best feuds in uh, Ring of Honor history. Next up, we have uh, CM Punk versus BJ Whitmer at the Epic Encounter. You know, back at this time, BJ Whitmer was a was a great wrestler. You know, he was in better shape. You know, Whitmer, he's kind of uh, his career was kind of underwhelming. You know, he never made it to WWE. Um, you know, never won the ROH World Title, but he was always you know he he was always on the ROH roster. He had a long career in Ring of Honor, but he just kind of had a bland look. You know, n not great in the ring, not great on promos. Uh, de definitely didn't age very well. But at this time, you know, he was in great shape and he was able to match Punk uh, blow for blow. They just had a they had a really good match right here. You know, watching this match, you could definitely tell Punk, um, you know, was creative in the ring. He liked to try different things. You know, and not not everything Punk did back then was executed. You know, very pretty. But, um, you know, he, he did like to get creative, and this this actually definitely had a great finish. Uh, Punk actually German suplexes uh, Whitmer off the ring apron through a table, and then we kind of get a no finish there. But, uh, but you know, B.J. Whitmer was, a, was, was very important to Ring of Honor, and especially back in 2003, he was a great, uh, I say he, he was a good worker back then, athletic, muscular, and uh, definitely got the job done. Uh, Punk and Whitmer would actually... You know, feud down the road with uh, Second City Saints versus the Prophecy. At this time, the feud never didn't really take off quite yet. But um, you know, Christopher Daniels was the head of the Prophecy, and uh, CM Punk headed the Second City Saints. There would definitely be a lot of um, you know feuding, and um, there was even a lot of uh, tension between women there that gotten involved. 
with uh, Punk's girlfriend. I believe Punk's girlfriend was actually abducted by B.J. Whitmer later on in 2003. So that this was definitely uh, you know a, a feud and a matchup that would uh, be a big part to Ring of Honor's history down the road. Uh, so next up, you have CM Punk versus Homicide from uh, Retribution. I believe this is actually part of the Red Robin Challenge. Or, or, or I'm sorry, Round Robin Challenge? Red Robin. That's the restaurant. But the Round Robin Challenge was a thing that Ring of Honor did the first three years. And they ended up being a really cool tournament, especially the first year. But back in 2003, I can't remember how it played out. But, uh, you know, Punk and Homicide, this was um, this is a great match right here. This is an example of a match just going balls to the wall, fast-paced, just uh, relentless action here. Not a lot of rest holds, just, uh, just constant, constant back and forth with a lot of great spots. Uh, Homicide. You know, was very Iverson like, very pit. You know, even though he was short, you definitely feared him. He was very pit bull like, uh, just a lot of reckless abandon from him. He he wrestled his matches like he didn't give a fuck. Um, you know, it, for as good as Punk's work was in 2003 on the mic, you know, in the ring, he was still getting better, still learning. You know, the P Punk was definitely not the best worker in Ring of Honor in 2003. So maybe that's why Homicide and AJ Styles were kind of like the top two MVP candidates. E even Ring of Honor released a DVD in 2003 called Homicide MVP of 2003. So, you know, they, Gabe Sapolsky and, and, you know, Ring of Honor man management basically proclaimed Homicide the best worker in 2003. He just had the best matches in 2003, looking back on it. But you, you could definitely argue that Punk was still the, the greatest all-around performer because this is the year when he really made a name for himself and was really hungry and really, you know, formed his identity. But, uh, you know, Homicide surprisingly goes over here. They actually banned... They couldn't use uh, Cop Killer for Homicide's finisher anymore, so they started calling it the Gringo Killer. Um, but definitely, uh, I believe Homicide makes uh, Punk tap out here for the surprising finish. And we move on from here. So next up, you have CM Punk and Cole Cabana taking on Raven and BJ Whitmer from uh, The Night of the Grudges. This is a crazy tag match that got bloody, a lot of brawling. This definitely had a little bit of everything here. Uh, Punk and Cabana as a team made for a great combination because Punk was more serious while Cabana was more of a clown. And, uh, you know, there's just been a lot of, you know, I just love that combination where you know, Punk is the edgy heel, but Cabana is kind of like the heel that could just do whatever he wants and uh, j just just brings a lot of playfulness to the team and kind of gets under Punk's nerves. And, you know, Punk Punk baby basically has to babysit Cabana uh, at this time. So I just thought that made a nice combination. But def this definitely had hot tags, uh, just a lot of... Um, you know, it just felt like they, they weren't holding back here. It just felt, felt like none of these guys were conserving energy. And, uh, you know, it definitely brought a lot of tension to the Punk and Raven feud with, uh, you know, Punk getting busted open. Um, they just did a lot of very, very edgy things here. And then this leads into the straight edge promo that Punk would cut at uh, Wrestle Rave 2003 on Raven. Uh, if you haven't seen it yet, this th this might go down. You know, I, I wouldn't say it's Punk's best promo, but it might be his uh, the most well known p promo that he's cut in Ring of Honor. It was just one of those moments where, you know, what was happening was just surreal, and and uh, you know, e even I think believe it was Daphne and Coca Banna. They just kind of had to take a step back and say, "Whoa, he's just kind of going off right now." And uh, you know, Punk touched on Raven about how. I believe he reminded him of his father and, you know, he even touched on how, you know, Raven, you know, pissed away everything for, you know, pills, for alcohol, for booze, for women, you know, the, everything that he got handed to him, but he flushed it all down the toilet. Uh, you know, a lot of people have probably seen this promo before. I actually uploaded it on my older account. So uh, for all you guys that used to follow my older videos, you, you know how important this promo was. And uh, it's on this DVD right here. It's uh, it kind of it kind of became known as the straight edge promo on Raven, but um, you know even Punk Punk even touched on it at the end of the promo. He said, "This is real. This is straight edge," and uh, you know it it definitely it, it kind of became the turning point of his career. And from there, you have the uh, dog collar match with uh, Raven. This is interesting because <laughs> he cut a promo on Danny Doring, who used to be a uh, I believe Raven's tag team partner in ECW. He touched on me, you know, he was under the tutelage of Raven for all those years, but what did, what did that get you? He even, he even took a shot at the straw hat guy from ECW, the straw hat guy, that the fan from ECW that used to sit front row for all these matches. 
you know, Punk even said, you know, you were there for all of Raven's uh, career in ECW, and where did it get you? It got you absolutely nothing. You're still sitting in the same spot with the same stupid hat. So, uh, yeah, man, so uh, those are definitely some um, really creative, just a lot of creative work from Punk on the mic right there. But this dog collar match is really dangerous, you know, just very, very dangerous stuff. Even featured a spot where Punk, you know, Raven's doing his Raven pro pose up on the bleachers, and then Punk just yanks him by the dog collar and, and drapes him, you know, brings him down from the bleachers by the neck. Just looked really, really brutal, really scary. But, um, you know, this is very bloody, a lot of choking, uh, some good comebacks from Raven here, Inter interference from Cole Cabana, interference from uh, Tommy Dreamer in the uh, aftermath. D this was just a... Uh, a huge uh, moment for older ECW fans. This 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 Death Before Dishonor event. This is the first Death Before Dishonor, and uh, you know made a lot of money. Very the highest attendance for any Ring of Honor show at the time. So it, it definitely brought back some ECW nostalgia. But at the same time, it made, made Punk a star. Uh, Punk actually crucified Raven to the ring. Uh, tied him up and was pouring beer down his throat. But then when Dreamer came out, they did the same thing to Punk. And, you know, this I believe that was, they, they kind of sold it like that's the first time Punk ever tasted alcohol. So, you know, it's very cutting edge. Um, just just a great... It wasn't the feud ender there. They would have another match at the conclusion, which was a steel cage match that they would do uh, later on in October. So so next up, you have a non-title match. This is the first time Punk and Joe would, uh, would meet at Bitter Friends Stiffer Enemies. Um, and don't expect anything classic here. And if you haven't seen it yet, check out CM Punk and Samoa Joe. That shoot interview. Punk and Joe have, uh, you know, a very similar friendship to, to Punk and Cabana. You know, you know, I, I think, I think Joe even touched on it that, uh, you know, he's one of the few people that can understand Punk. Um, you know, it's very, I, you know, I think he even mentioned that it's very difficult to be Punk's friend. You kind of have to really understand him and, uh, just just kind of know when to shut the fuck up and when to um you know act cool around them you know so joe's one of the guys that really knows how to handle punk and that that's why they were such great friends and uh you know joe joe's a really laid back guy too he's really laid back really funny uh just the chemistry and the uh you know the storytelling in that punk and joe uh shoot interview is something that everyone needs to check out it's really it's really like hanging out with punk and joe and um you know, Joe's not the intimidating monster that he comes across in wrestling. He's really just a really laid back and fun guy. But, uh, you know, at, during this match, Joe was really trying to, uh, you know, make an name for himself as the ROH world champion. Uh, Punk was actually hurt at the time. He had just come back from Japan with an injured knee. Uh, I believe Joe had a bad elbow. So don't expect a classic match here. This featured a lot of working over the knee. Uh, Joe actually makes Punk submit with a uh, kind of a Chiquita clutch where he, he, he pulled back on Punk's hair and his neck. And uh, Punk had to tap out. There was actually a beautiful shining wizard from Punk. Uh, so, so Punk did get some offense in, but just to, don't expect anything crazy like you've seen from uh, Punk and Joe during their trilogy in 2004. This, this wasn't anything like it. This is just a friendly non-title match here. Um, you know, th th maybe this shouldn't have even made it onto the DVD set, but uh, if you want to see the first time Punk and Joe wrestle, it's on this compilation. And then next up, you have CM Punk versus AJ Styles from The Tradition Continues. I believe this match took place in uh, Maryland maybe Baltimore, Maryland, in October of 2003. Um, a lot of interesting things to say about Punk and Styles. Um, at this time, you know, AJ, it's funny how, you know, AJ Styles was a bigger name than Punk for the first, you know, five years of their career. And then kind of things, things kind of swapped around when Punk, you know, made a name for himself in the WWE. But um, I, I just, I just kind of get the feeling there was a lot of jealousy there on uh on both sides especially from cm punk's side um this is really you know the punk and aj styles they never really had a huge program kayfabe wise but i would say non-kayfabe wise in real life this is really what this is what really started the roh first tna feud um you know especially with the scandal here you know down the road you know punk uh, wanted AJ and Daniels and everyone to stick together. He said, I believe, I believe he touched on this during the summer of punk at the sign of dishonor promo. He even mentioned, he even mentioned that, um, you know, when, when ring of honor finally did bring AJ Styles and Christopher Daniels back, he said, you know, if it wasn't for CM Punk, there'd be no ring of honor for, 
AJ Styles and Christopher Daniels to come crawling back to. So it's a direct reference to, you know, some of the behind the scenes things that were going on when uh, TNA decided to pull all the uh, TNA talent from Ring of Honor. Um, but, you know, CM Punk is one of the ones that decided to stay with Ring of Honor while AJ Styles and Christopher Daniels decided to stay with TNA. And there was even a point where AJ couldn't look CM Punk in the eye uh, at the meeting. And, um, you know, so, you know, Punk touched on that in a re on the uh, sign of Dishonor promo. And then uh, I believe if you if you check out a shoot interview on uh, YouTube, they actually asked AJ Styles uh, what he thought of CM Punk, and and you could just tell, even judging from the comments, you could just tell that you know AJ doesn't. He's called him a happy-go-lucky guy. You could just tell that they just never really had the best relationship, even in the shoot with Samoa Joe. You know when they met, when he mentioned uh, AJ Styles' name, you know Punk would say he's a he's a good guy, but just basically he mentioned that you know just one of the guys that kind of reaped the benefits of you know christopher daniels just going out of his way and just being unselfish you know you know they they look at christopher daniels like he was kind of like a, a father figure that helped out everyone it was it was really daniels that kind of um you know brought all these guys together and, and kind of you know i wouldn't say babysat but but really you know made sure everyone had a fair chance with, uh, you know, this new influx of uh, indie wrestlers. But, uh, but you know, back to CM Punk and AJ Styles. Just a good match up here. This is the first match of their trilogy. I believe AJ won every single match. Um, this featured just a lot of great strikes, a lot of great counters. Um, just a beautiful lariats here. You know, AJ, AJ was great. You know, his mat work back in 2003 in Ring of Honor was, was great. AJ was definitely the better worker at the time. But, you know, Punk Punk wasn't far behind. You know, he, he you could definitely tell, you know, he was improving as a wrestler. Uh, this featured a beautiful counter to the Shining Wizard. So Punk actually goes for the Shining Wizard. And then AJ counters it into the Styles Class to get the victory. I, I believe AJ actually won with that exact same finish. Uh, WrestleMania 20 weekend at uh, at our best. So so there you go with that. So that's that's pretty much it, guys. That's the uh, CM Punk compilation from uh, Ring of Honor in 2003. Here, uh, yeah. So P Punk was definitely a, a genius back then. You know, the, the, definitely one of the best, if not the best, all around performer in uh, in wrestling history. I mean, uh, just a great wrestler, great mic skills. Basically, he, he's he's like a Roddy Piper that could that could wrestle uh, CM Punk. That's how I would compare him. Punk's favorite wrestler is Roddy Piper. You know, that's what he told the wrestling school when he started the wrestle. You know, Piper was his idol. And um, so yeah, man, I, I just I just think if Punk does come back to the WWE, you just you have you pretty much have everything that punk could do he, he he could work with guys like guys that he's never worked with before like a kurt angle um you know there, there's there's other guys that he's wrestled on the indies that he could wrestle you know in the wwe for the first time like a samoa joe uh like a uh, like a kenta or um you know, give me some other names here. You know, even a Tyler Black or a Seth Rollins or, uh, you know, he said he's had so much, you know, I talked about some of the real life tension he had with AJ Styles. You can see Punk and AJ for the first time in WWE. And, you know, Punk could kind of call AJ out for kind of breaking, you know, for kind of siding with TNA. And, and, and maybe Punk could call AJ out for saying, you know, he kind of kind of bring to the attention that, you know, maybe if we all stayed together, we wouldn't have to settle for, you know, being a slave to the WWE. So I, I think a Punk and AJ storyline would definitely, you know, be something that, that would be really interesting for a lot of people. But, um, yeah, even Punk versus Triple H with the kind of, you know, obvious real life tension there could definitely, you know, maybe that storyline could play out the right way this time. Um, so like I said, guys, the, 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 the possibilities are, are endless. A lot of dream matches, a, a lot of, you know, uh, situations with real life tension that could kind of be, be kind of, uh, brought back into a, uh, real life storyline right here. So, uh, so definitely I, I do, I do think punk, uh, needs to come back if he wants to solidify himself as one of the all time greats. It, it's always going to feel like something's missing. And I, 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 I just feel like the, you know, him leaving right before WrestleMania, was kind of you know a shot to the fans it really kind of took the heart and the life out of the fans and uh i just definitely was uh you know definitely some of the things he said put a bad taste in my mouth but um 
But, uh, you know, but overall, man, CM Punk, um, you know, when he's hungry, when he's motivated, when he's at the top of his game, uh, there's nobody better. So I would, I would definitely like to see him come back uh, uh, down the road. But, um, you know, wish, wish him all the best of luck in the uh, in mixed martial arts. You know, he's, he hasn't been off to a good start, but I, I, I definitely think you'll see a better effort out of him next time. But uh, eventually he's going to have to make a decision uh, about coming back and uh, and, and we'll, we'll see what happens. I know money is a huge issue and I, I, I do think he his his dream is probably to wrestle make a lot of money as a part-timer and uh that's something that 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 probably is going to have to happen down the that's probably something that i think he wants to happen down the road you know to to make to make a lot of money and not have to kill him kill his body and kill himself so, so we'll see what happens i uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video but uh if you haven't seen it yet go back and check some older cm punk footage out definitely check out that punk and joe shoot that is an amazing shoot just a lot of fun to sit through and uh i'll see you guys later